today uh, uh, part two of uh, chapter five and we're talking about problem solving methods and in this uh, chapter uh, we're talking about uh, problem solving uh, method it's a process improvement achieves the greatest results when it operates within the framework of problem solving method do you guys know what's the problem solving method do you guys remember problem solving method let's see maybe this will remind you here we've got the seven, step, seven phase problem solving method. Every time you have a problem, uh, number one, you identify the opportunities for improvement. Then you analyze the current process. You develop an optimal solution. You implement the changes, study the results, standardize the solution, and then plan for the future. And if you put this in a graph, it will look like this. Remember, plan, do, study, act. So here you go with phase one, you identify the problem. So in order to make a plan, you need first to have what is exactly the problem. Remember last class we talked about the example of, uh, let's say, uh, KFC and uh, the ordering and the kitchen and the cleaning. And now if we have a problem, let's say uh, customers are complaining that it's taking too long to get the order. Then we start to identify what is the opportunity is to improve this ordering speed, accuracy, remember, remove waste, remove errors, make it safe. And then we want to analyze this process. So what are the, uh, what is actually happening now and where can we fix? And then you start to develop this optimal solution. So the best way to, to improve this is, let's say we have a screen in front of the customer so the customer can verify the order before it goes. Or maybe we can have, uh, there is a, a receipt that the customer has to receive in order to collect their uh, uh, order. Uh, number four is implementation. It's actually you do it. So you go, you do the screen or you do the special receipt. And then you study the results. Were customers happier? Did they actually get their orders more accurately with less errors, less waste? And then you standardize the solution. Once it, you test it and it works, then you standardize it and that's in the acting stage. And then you start to plan for the future. So that next time it works. Okay. So, uh, so these are the seven phases uh, with the relationship to PDSA. Any questions on the seven <coughs> phases? So basically, uh, to sum up what we discussed, uh, we've got uh, seven phases and those phases for any problem solving. And uh, we said uh, uh, these seven phases, they can go with the PDSA. Now we will go through each one of them uh, uh, in details. Phase one, you identify the opportunity. The objective of this phase is to identify prioritize opportunity for improvement. Consists of three parts. A problem, uh, uh, you form the team and you define the scope. Okay. And then uh, phase two, you start to analyze the current process. The objective of the process is to understand the process and how it is currently performed. So uh, we talked about, uh, let's say uh, we give an example from uh, uh, maybe we bring a, an example from a hotel. Let's say in a hotel uh, we want to uh, improve quality, so we started to see what customers want. And then we notice that customers are having very difficult uh, time with uh, uh, reservation. So uh, here is an opportunity. How can we improve our reservation system? So we will start with phase number one. We should identify the opportunity. So we, there we will see uh, what is the problem in reservation. Uh, they call, they can't reach, or is it they uh, order online and they don't receive uh, confirmation, or uh, you know uh, what is it with the reservation that can be improved? Then you start to analyze what is the current existing process for reservation. And then on step number three, you will develop an optimal solution. So maybe you decided, okay, we will have this reservation. There should be a reservation system. Uh, when someone calls in or fax in or email in or online, uh, they, it goes to the system, it reserves, it gets a booking, it put an order, the order goes to the uh, chief of the uh, housing department. The, so, so all the parties are informed and... So here is what is the optimal solution. So this phase has the objective of establishing potential and feasible possible solutions and recommendations uh, for the best solution to improve this process. And then more than one solution is frequently required to remedy a situation. So uh, maybe we will have multiple ways or more than one optimal solution to solve this reservation problem. 
uh, maybe they decided okay maybe we can send SMSs to confirm reservations or maybe we need to do reminders for customers to cancel the reservations if they don't show up by this time and in this phase creativity plays the major role so here brainstorming is the principal technique so in this uh, optimal uh, solution you need to be creative and brainstorming on possible solutions requires not only knowledge of the problem but also innovation and creativity and there are three types of connectivity creativity either create new process that's you know, innovate you combine different processes a unique combination of what they already exist you modify existing processes it succeeds when managers utilize the experience education energy empowered work group and once possible solutions have been determined you will start to evaluate so here uh, you have a process, you identify an opportunity, and then uh, you start to analyze it, and now here you come up with some solution. And the, relating this to your project, that's what we want you in the observation of a process. Remember, you're going to go, you will sit, you observe a process. Now you're going to be asked to you know, document this process. So here you will be uh, finding an opportunity and maybe thinking of some uh, creative uh, optimal solution. And then in phase four, that's when you implement it. Now, of course, in your project, you can't implement. So in your project, you will do phases one, two, and three. But for phase four, you can't do, because once the best solution is selected, it can be implemented, and the, and the contests uh, of the implementation uh, plan report must be fully described why, who, when, who, uh, how, where, and will it be done or not. So here, you start to actually do it. And of course, once you start to implement something new in the, your process, then you need to you know, identify all of these questions. Why you will do it, and who's going to do it, and if they're going to do it, how, and... Phase four, you implement the changes. You answer to these questions will designate required action, assign responsibility, establish implementation milestones. So phase one, we will start to do a reservation online. Uh, there will be an email sent. Phase two, we will do reservations by uh, SMS. And phase four, we will do mobile application for reservations. After approval of the quality council, it's desired it's desirable to obtain the advice and cons consent of the department's team individuals that may be affected by the change. Now, of course, if you're going to do this, then the people in the reservation department and the management and the sales team, and the, they need to be aware, and you need to have these people to buy into the implementation. And then you start to study the results. The phases has been objective of monitoring, evaluating the changes. You track, you study the effectiveness of the improvement efforts through data collection and required uh, process. And number six, you standardize it. You make it standard. So here, uh, once the team's satisfied with the change, you have to institu institutionalize it by uh, positive control of the process. So the accounting department is aware, the control, the quality people, everything is written, everything is documented, it is implemented. If you have more than one branch, you implement it in all of your branches and so on. And then also it's needed in cross-training in, or in other jobs within the process to ensure customer knowledge and job rotation. So maybe you want to update your website to include this new process. Maybe you need to update your manuals in your brochures, in your uh, uh, manual, in the small leaflets that you have inside your uh, business, all of your employees in their training for new employees, for customer orientation. So once you implement it, then it needs to be rolled out, standardized. And then you start to plan for the future. And this phase has the objective of achieving improved level of process performance, uh, key activities to conduct regularly scheduled reviews of the progress. So every once in a while you go, you check, did we do it the way it is now? And, uh, uh, and then continuous improvement means not only being satisfied with doing a good job or a process, but also striving to improve the job or process. So here you start to plan it for the future. Are you guys okay with the seven steps? Now, number six, you standardize it. It becomes standard. So in order to standardize it, it means uh, it is part of the system. It means it is uh, uh, controlled. There's someone responsible to check that it works. Uh, it is uh, documented. So if you go and you open the manuals, it is there. Uh, uh, if there are new people, these people need to be trained and it become formal training. So here it become more formal. So everyone knows it's fully documented, fully checked, part of the company procedures. Are you guys okay with the seven steps?
someone would like to remind you of the seven steps. Step number one, you identify opportunity. Two, you start to analyze it. Three, you start to creatively think of a solution. Four, implement it. So here you go and you do it. Four, five. See, five here is you study the results. So, did it work? This is what we want. This is not what we want. And then, number six, standardize seven, plan for the future. So, you see what you need to do. All right, so that's the seven steps.